What's goody? It's your girl Stahl, Media Monster. It's Club Chats. How you doing today? I'm here with DJ Nels, DJ slash radio personality. Also, JCA, artist slash producer. How are you guys today? Chilling. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Well, you know, Club club Chats always brings you the best. So, um, Nels, start off with yourself. Let me know a little bit about you, your background, where you from. Well, basically, you know, everybody know me around Westchester now. You know what I mean? Been going on a club scene for two years now, but I've been DJing for eight years now. DJ Nels, of course, got the name from basically my name. My name is Darnell. Just took the Dar out of it. It just made Nels, and everybody just called me Nels anyway, so I just put the DJ in front of it. So basically from Yonkers, you know what I mean? Lived out here in White Plains for a minute and just, you know what I mean, been doing this DJ thing ever since, man. Just been going crazy with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, so uh, how about you? <clears throat> well, you know my full name yourself. is Jarrell Curtis Abraham. That's also where I derive my artist name from, JCA. Um, rapper, producer, engineer. Um, I think I've been writing rhymes for like nine years now. Um, so you've a, always been into music? Um, yeah. Even before I was writing, I was always into it. Okay. And um, I was born and raised in White Plains, and you know. White Plains stand up right now. You are. You already know. You <laughs> already know. The buzz, is, the buzz is pretty large out here, you know, as far as what I'm doing. Okay. So, um, as far as you, you're a DJ. What, what inspired you to become a DJ? What, when did you know that that's what you wanted to do? I mean, growing up and just seeing, um. Uh, I mean, older DJ been doing all the family days and all the community events around my, my neighborhood, 86, what up? Um, so just looking at him being a young dude and just being real curious and just being just into music so much. So I'm just ready. I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do this. You know what I mean? Maybe I could be that dude. And, you know, I got my computer and then I got my first, you know what I mean, two pair of 1200s, you know what I mean? Got on. This is around when I was like 12 or something. I mean, 12 years old, just practicing in my crib. So from 12, basically, on, yeah, yeah. you knew that's what you wanted to do, that's what your heart was. Did you go to school, or did you just follow with that, you know, nah, follow learned, that mentor? I learned from myself. I learned from that uh, from that older DJ, too. He taught me. But uh, for the most part, I learned from myself, you know what I mean? Then I switched over to computers and then just learned, just taught myself about computers, too. So... And then went to school for computers, and then from there it just went hand in hand. Like like nowadays, I mean everything is digital, so True. it just made it more convenient for me with for computers you. and everything. So <clears throat> just been doing it from the age of twelve. Now I'm twenty five, so you know what I mean. You do the math, man. Just been doing it <laughs> crazy, 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 crazy. Just been hitting everybody in the head. I mean, I realize that DJs it's it's kind of a common thing for you know DJs to have mentors. I realize a lot of most of the DJs that I've been meeting have mentors rather than going to school. I mean, like you said, is it yeah. It just makes it more, um, you feel like you're all around rather than if you were to go to school and study one thing. Um, I did the school thing. I mean, like I said, before, like I took a break from DJing at one point. That's when I went to go to school. And I mean, I studied computers. So I, even if I didn't DJ, I would still be in the mix of doing something with music mm -hmm. and and computers. So I'll probably be producing beats or producing something. So school, I mean, I didn't really need it, but I mean, just the fact that I needed, I wanted that piece of paper to say, I mean, I did it, and so I just did. So with that, just like I said, music, music just been my thing, my true calling. So I mean, it just went hand in hand, like I said once again. Um, just ran with it. Okay. JCA, Jarrell, so um, what was it for you? What was your inspiration as far as music? What? When did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Um, I mean, first rap song, I guess, that I ever heard, you know, but Which from was, that... What was that? Can you remember? I think it was, um, it was a cassette tape, too. The Lost Boys. The Lost Boys. Yeah. Okay. Something crazy, like, you know? Throwback. Throwback, throwback. I think it was... Uh, What's the name of the song? Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. It's probably mm -hmm. the very first rap song I ever heard. It's a classic mm -hmm. record. Yeah, and um, from that point, I just I, I dived into it, you know, from the Wu Tang, the Nas, Big EJ, and I just fell in love with it. And you know, 
me me sitting down and trying to write something and put something together, just trying to express myself and and really like see what, if I could piece my thoughts together the same way the the way that I you know heard those heard guys it do originally, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that was really what inspired me because you know my first rhyme wasn't really that bad, so. Mm -hmm. I'm comp I, the whole time I was always comparing myself to these guys as, and as I was going and I think that's what's also helped me progress and get better mm -hmm. but it always inspired me because I would always see how close I was you know what I'm saying and, yeah. and, it, and it let me know that it was possible so you know that and having the right people uh, notice that you know that I had a gift that that they felt I had a talent that could be used, you know, as far as potential was concerned. Um, that's when, you know, people pulled me into the music thing and not even just writing and rapping and, you know, being a rap artist, you know. Uh, my uncle Travis Williamson, he um, invested in some equipment and that's when I got into producing. So, Did you, you teach know, yourself? I started out teaching myself, but, you know, Things like that get complicated because, like Nell said, everything's very every, everything's digital now. So, you know, unless you're, uh, you know, a science whiz or you you know the manuals backwards, you know, you gotta really you gotta really live that stuff, you eat, sleep, and breathe it. And you know, in order to get that discipline instilled in me, it, you know, I ended up going to school at Mercy College for mm -hmm. music technology to actually to get a better understanding of what I was doing. And I pretty much sharpened everything up, and I ran, and I just took it from there. Okay. So, um, as far as as far as music, have you tried? Uh, have you done any other types of music aside from hip hop? I mean, do you, or is I, it just mainstream hip hop? Not, not as far as producing. I mean, as far as being an as far as an artist. Um, I've, performance wise. Performance wise, it's always been hip hop. I mean, I, I've experimented with you know some some songs where I've, I've tried to sing a little bit you know do something you know i'm a little embarrassed about that cause <laughs> i don't i don't think i can sing don't be embarrassed don't be embarrassed yeah i, I don't mean think you I can gotta sing, first you try you know yeah, you gotta absolutely. see if, what absolutely. happens you know and other people tell me that you know the stuff that i put together they like it it sounds good so you know whatever my best material is is what i always try to put out and you know whether that's me singing rapping whatever i'm doing you know if it's hot, I'm yeah, you're, try you're to put your it worst out. critic, of course. So yes, you know if it's yes. not sounding right to you, it's not gonna go out. And, Absolutely. Um, so now, yeah. tell me, how do you compare yourself to other DJs that are out? Mm, good question. Um, I don't. You know what I mean, I, 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 good answer. I, I really don't because then that's when you put a little too much pressure than than to need it on yourself. You know what I mean? You just going, I mean, me personally, I just going to the club, you know what I mean? And um, I do my homework, you know what I mean? A lot of people think I, I club a lot. It's not because I'm there partying, it's that because I want to know what's the new, what's the new, you know what I mean, songs out, what's everybody vibing to, what's everybody going crazy over, you know what I mean? And then I take it from there, and then I, I, I incorporate it to my own set or whatever. But, you know what I mean, other than that, like, I don't try to compare myself to other DJs because every DJ to myself, what I think personally, you know what I mean, is creative and they and they're unique in their own light. You know what I mean? So yeah. if I sit there and compare myself to another DJ then I'm just following that DJ, then I'm DJ Flex or I'm um Mr C I'm somebody. Like Paul. <laughs> Paul, let me take that back. I'm not Mr C. Anyway, oh, man. Um, excuse the laughter. That's a whole, that's a excuse whole the laugh other conversation. Else. Um but yeah, like, yeah. but you get the idea. <laughs> I mean, like I said, no age. Um, so I try to just, I mean, listen to what's going on in the club and just try to incorporate it in my own set and just make it my own. Like, so that's what makes me different, I guess. That's what makes me better, you know what I mean, than some other DJs because they just go in the club. They because don't really you're do confident. You, yeah. You're confident in your music. You're confident in what you <clears throat> Confident do. and competitive, you yeah. know what I mean? Very competitive, but... It's the difference between competitive and just hating. Like a lot of people hate, and um, but I just try to make myself known by doing it my own. That's how I say. It. So I don't never compare myself to other DJs because then you just becoming that DJ. So I'm myself. So okay. How about you? So how do you compare yourself to you know other artists slash producers that are out? Um, I really try not to. I mean, that was when I was younger. As far as comparing myself to like mainstream artists and these were guys that were like 
I wouldn't really say they were my heroes, but they were my inspiration to do it. So, you know, as I got older, I started getting inspired by different things, you know, and like things, not so much people. Things, people, my life, pretty much. Things that I was going through, things I was experiencing, people, that, new people I was meeting, new experiences, and, and all the above. Just growing up, and you know, up to the point of being a child and becoming an adult, you know, and going going through life. So that was that turned out to be my biggest inspiration. But you know, I don't. That's why I really don't compare myself to any particular artists or any particular producers or anybody that's really doing anything out here right now. I just try to look for my own niche and, and, and get in where I fit in. And if I am ever listening to another artist or, or studying anything that anybody's doing, it's just to look for inspiration to do my own thing. So. I like that, I like that. So um, what what is, what's in your iPod? What do you like to listen to? What, right. what music do you like to listen to? And who would be your favorite artists or top rated artists right now personally um right now who i'll start with the ipod question <laughs> right now um kiss is in my ipod heavy yes Wiz khalifa is in my ipod heavy you know i got a lot of new blood in there cole j cole uh you know some down south guys like cheesy and um rick ross you know, I just, I'm trying to listen to whatever, you know, people are, are viewing as the hottest music out right now. And it's like, I don't have a lot of them in my iPod. Like, I don't I don't have a cluster of their music. I think probably the largest cluster of music I have right now is Wiz Khalifa. Mm -hmm. He's probably my favorite new artist right now. Um, but as far as my uh, favorite artist top overall is me. So, oh, it should be you. Yeah. It should be you. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, think that's, I think that's very important. You know, to rate yourself. It's not about being cocky. It's not about necessarily, you know, thinking that you're better. It's right. just you should rate yourself Why as not? being number one. You should rate. I mean, when I say thinking that you're better, I mm -hmm. mean better than the person overall, not as far as just, you know, in your talent and what you can do. Well, like you said, you don't compare. So when you're thinking that you're better than someone else, you're actually comparing yourself to them. Well, so it, that's why it does go hand in hand. I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah, you know, so I think it's it's always best to rate yourself as a top in self-esteem with anything that you do, regardless if it's music, DJing, hosting is so important because people in this <coughs> industry all around will try to break you down every Absolutely. chance Absolutely. they get. So self-esteem is very important. Um, but, you know, back to, you know, what I was asking him, what are you, what is your favorite artist right now and what do you have in your iPod? What's in my iPod is um, Bobby Caldwell, um, Stevie Wonder, you know, Ray Charles, and I mean, I don't, because I hear hip-hop so much, like I'm a DJ, so it gets redundant to me, and it gets, I mean, old and boring to me. Like, if I'm listening to hip-hop, I'm listening to Jay-Z, OJ, I'm listening to the Nas, I'm listening to, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. Kanye West, but New Blood now? It's, is it not exciting? It's, it's, is it just that you hear it so much? Or is it just that you don't find the new music as exciting? It's both. It's both. That's it's how you feel? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, part of me, not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but okay. that's what I was saying. Like, as far as me having them in my iPod, I only have, like, a few songs. Like, one or two for <laughs> each person. It's not, I mean, it's it not is. exciting. I mean, there's no creativity in hip-hop no more. It's just, you know, we got a lot of cats just just doing a lot of song song and dance songs and they're doing a lot of you know eeny meeny money lyrics so it's like mm -hmm. it, it makes you feel like it makes me personally feel like I'm dumb like mm -hmm. it makes me feel like I'm getting dumb about a minute just listening to it so not to I mean take anything away from mm -hmm. artists I mean do your thing get your money whatever how you wanna do it but me personally like I just play for the club and then outside of the club I'm listening to something with substance I mean something mm -hmm of old, I mean, so that's that's what's in my iPod. Well, with all that said, you know, I want to have a man's take on a question that everyone's been asking. What is your take on the whole Nicki Minaj, Little Kim? Like, I, as a man, is your outlook on the music and, you know, their images compared to each other, everything? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where, where do you stand? Do you feel that Kim, you know, 
kind of took her image do you feel that you know a lot of the new artists basically just build off the images and swag from previous artists before and try to reinvent themselves i don't know well everything's recycled you know that's the that's the exactly. first thing everything is recycled otherwise you know you wouldn't have seen nikki coming out with wigs and, you know she even started to to uh poke fun at little kim and posing her pictures the same way that kim used to so you know it's a tricky answer it's a tricky question and a tricky answer but i mean at the end of the day it's it's really focused on the the music industry mm -hmm. and the the business itself the 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 corporate world of music as a machine that's how they market these artists that's how they create their images they they recycle they take the images from the ones before and they say you know what if we take this and this and that from Lil' Kim, build on that. this, this and that from mm -hmm. Foxy Brown, mm -hmm. and this, this and that from, you know what I'm saying, MC Light, we can mix it all together and create a Nicki Minaj gumbo. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, she's got a little right. bit of the best of all of those artists that you can tell influence her to make music in the first place. So, you know, shout to her publisher, shout to him, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> shout to her manager. Like, because at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. Her handlers are the ones that's really telling her, Nikki, this will work for you. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? And her management team. I mean, as far as the beef between them, it was more ego than anything else. Wow. And Little Kim, I'm not going to say that Little Kim was on her way out, but her career was definitely dying down. It wasn't what it used to be because of the whole junior mafia situation and everything else with it you know and everybody knows that and that but that's not to take away from anything from her as an artist which is where people went wrong because they're saying oh she's not a good artist because you know her career is not at its peak anymore mm -hmm. but when her career was at its peak everybody was fantasizing about her and that's all they only wanted little kim you know, there was never going to be another little can. It was like, oh, she's the great, like, you know what I mean? But now that there and is. Now, that, now there's a Nicki Minaj, so it's like, yeah. little can, look, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I see you nodding. Are you, are you in I agreement? Mean, he's it's basically taking all the answers. I mean, <laughs> that's basically what it not. He basically explained it. He yeah. basically said it what it was. But um, <clears throat> me personally, I just think that Lil' Kim was hating a little bit. Like, I mean, I'm going I'm to say know, this. Like, I mean, and I'm a Lil' Kim fan since I was young, since I couldn't really listen to her, like, cause she was too explicit, but mm -hmm. now, but it just seems like she sees somebody that's, that's her, you know what I mean, her in her own light, and she's not liking that, it's like somebody getting old, and they don't have it no more, so, um, I just Yikes. think Lil' Kim, I just think yeah. Lil' Kim just, just got a little, her, she got a big ego, and she, she didn't really, take it as well like Nikki did pay homage though she did yeah. say big up Lil' Kim she wasn't on no I'm the new best thing out forget all them old girls man I'm gonna do my thing she paid homage she did what she did and she kept it moving but Lil' Kim act she was acting like she had to do a little more bow down and all that but it's not really about that you know what I mean it's not really about that right. but I just think Lil' Kim got a little mad a little a little jealous you know what I mean but you know what I mean you gotta move to the side and let <laughs> let let lo, let the new blood shine. Blood like that's shine. how I feel about these old DJs. Like you know what I mean, yeah. it's about time. Like it's about time. You let <laughs> some of these yeah. new DJs get that man. You done been right. in the game, been on the radio for ten some odd years, fifteen years. Like come on, how right. you plan to die right. at the radio station? Like <laughs> I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Like I'm just keeping it real. You plan to have your funeral at the radio station too? Like when are you gonna leave that radio station? I'm not hating. I I show respect to all the DJs that did it before me. But you, know? you would think that, you know, some of the artists that are out and DJs and, you know, entertainers, seeing the grind, seeing the struggle, seeing everything, the fact that they've been there for such a long time, they've benefited so much that they would at least, some of them, extend a hand or give you give some of the younger artists or the, you know, newer, your newer blood, as you exactly, call them, yeah more of a direction to follow Absolutely. more of you know just more of a step more stepping stones well i mean but that being said all it would take is a simple cosign you know i mean a, 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 an artist as far as like a artist that's been in the game a long time a vet they don't really have to do much because they got so much pull anyway yeah. whoever they say this is the next person mm -hmm. to carry the torch this is the next person to, to, to be on that person is on and they choose not to do that because 
they want to keep it, hold on to it as long as they can, even when they know they ain't still got it no more. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it, it, like the same way he said, it, it, I mean no disrespect, but they know in their hearts that their careers are over. They know that they should, they're at that retirement age. And it is, it, it's, it's ego again. It's also selfishness that they don't pass it down. And that's I mean, why it's, it's hard it's for some people to let go of the glory days, though. I mean, well, I mean, it is, but at the same whack, time, the man. music suffers because whack. of that. The music suffers I because the, the new artists come in, they don't know how to piece things together the same way that the, mm -hmm. the top dogs used to do it. There's certain things that are not even focal points anymore, as far as key points where the music is being made. Like creativity doesn't even matter anymore. You know, that's why the music is boring. You know, but but. Then these older heads, they get mad and they hate on it and say, oh, that new stuff is whack, da 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 But yeah, you're not bringing nobody in. You're not bringing no younger artists in and taking them under the wing and saying, let me show you how I did it. Let me show you what you should be doing. You don't have to be me, but let me show you how it works. You know what I mean? And that's all they need, just a little direction, a little push. That's it. But they choose not to do that, you know? And I think that that's really why... So you feel that... You feel that your you feel that your the direction you're going in with hip hop is completely different than I mean is it different than what's out or you just felt very, that you it's very different is it subject matter or is it just very, the style yeah there's a lot of subject matter in my in my music my music is is there's always something to speak on there's always something happening and um I know there's a lot of mainstream music right now that focuses on making people forget about those things making people ignore what's going on in the, in, in the world because a lot of it's so messed up. But, you know, I also try to, you know, highlight some of those things and to put a perspective on it where people will say, well, well you know, that is true. You know what I mean? Or, well, maybe it's not so bad or maybe there's a solution or maybe we should look for one. You know, it's when you run away from a problem, it follows you. Okay. It doesn't go away. So, Nels, you say, you say hip-hop, you know, gets kind of boring to you. Yeah. Do you... I know that's what you normally play in the clubs, mm -hmm. but I mean, is that what you would prefer to play? What type of music would you prefer to play? Would it? I mean, it ain't, it's never up to me in a club. It's always up to me. I mean, the if crowd. it was up to you. If it was if up it to was me. If it was up to you and you could choose and I say, mean, this is the type of music I want to play, what would it if be? If it was up to me, honestly, you know what I mean, I would play R&B. I'm an R&B cat, so you know I mean, it would be a real smooth, mellow vibe. You know what I mean? Which, you know what I mean, the... 25 and up usually prefer anyway so I would play I mean the R&B I want to really play all that you know what I mean song and snap and dance and I mean two-stepping and I don't want I want to do all that but it would be more of a you know I mean Donald Jones you know what I mean type of vibe you know what I mean next all the 90s the 90s if y'all if y'all go to the club you notice that the 90s R&B early set Always get the crowd going. Always, always. So it's like sure. I would rather keep it like that. And I mean, play a little hip hop. You no, know, I'm not bashing hip hop at all. Like I listen to hip hop now just to enjoy myself in a club. Other than that, I'm not looking for no message. I'm not looking because that's not what they trying to. I mean, incorporate in their songs anymore. So I'm right. just looking forward to dance, to party, and that's all it is. Outside of the club, it's a totally different vibe for me. But if I was to play music that I want to play in the club, it would definitely be like a 90s R&B type flow. And I mean, just a mellow flow, everybody just vibing out. I'm glad I was able to get your guys, the, your take on music, period. I mean, I, I'm looking at the time. I just wish I had more time to really go into the two of you, pers you know, mm -hmm. uh, you personally. But, I mean, the, your take on music, you as a DJ and you as an artist, it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. And it's it makes it's going to make a lot of people open their eyes to say, wow, like, what are we really listening to? Mm -hmm. You know, right. is is this really what music is about right now? And I really appreciate you for that. Even, you know, the whole thing with Nikki, I've always been curious to see what the male, you know, opinion of that whole controversy would be because you normally only get the women's side. Right. Sometimes, you know, I think sometimes we could be a little biased. So, you know, it was good about that. But, um, but you know... You let me know what's going on with you. You know, you have any things, you know, coming up. I, I know mean, you want to give, you know, shout outs to any DJs that you got in yeah, association man. with you, your peoples. I'll call a shout out, um, No Sleep to Be Rich. I mean, Blue Prince, J H, Bottles Up, Dino, um, Tigger Man. Um, big shout out to my homie, um, DJ Supreme. Of course, DJ Head, the Westchester Miracle Kid. 
Um, shout out to all the DJs I've been working with thus far. Tech One, you know. Um, shout out to um, that I can't think of. If top he right can't now. remember, if I can't remember your you, name, no disrespect. It just you know I me, mean, my mind somewhere else. But um, shout out to the DJs that been doing it too. Like like I said, no disrespect. You know what I mean, it's just been too long. Like I mean, it's time. For new blood Let them know in, about but, your um, radio station where they can listen to you. Oh yeah, ninety. Oh, that. I'm glad you hosting. Um, ninety four point one FM. Tune in each and every Monday, eight to ten p.m. Or you can log on www.realdealfm.com. You can log on with your mobile phones too, man. So if you ain't got no radio, because I know they got rid of the radios now. So log on with your mobile phone. If you ain't got no computer, just log on with your smartphone, whatever. You can listen to us on there. Me and DJ Supreme, man. We on there each and every Monday, eight to ten. And, you know, I got a couple of parties coming up, too. Um, I'll do the rundown for you. I'll do the rundown for you. Yeah. He got he got May 5th. He's going to be at Saludes. First Fridays, um, always at Saludes. Uh, the 6th, he has Lazy Lounge, White Plains, after work, 5 to 10. The 7th, he got Cabo. The 13th, Taboo. The 20th, Honey Lounge, June 4th, Harlem Lanes. The 29th, Crazy. For bookings, call Castro, 914 648 Zero six three six. Once again, that's Castro JCA. You know, let them know where they can find your music. I know you said um, New City Franchise. Right. Uh, right. That's Facebook. Uh, that's also for Twitter. Mm -hmm. Can you let them well, know your Twitter? It's Facebook.com backslash New City Franchise. Like all one word. Follow me on Twitter, JCA with an underscore at the end. Um, I'm on MySpace. I, don't, I know a lot of people are not really on MySpace right now, but. Uh, if you are on MySpace, add me on MySpace backslash JCA with a number nine at the end of it. Uh, you let them know your album will be out this summer. Album, uh, album dropping this summer. City of Kings album, City of Kings documentary is dropping uh, both this summer. Everyone stay tuned for that. June 11th, you got the Juneteenth Festival in White Plains. June 23rd, Jackie Blues. I mean, your calendar is pretty full right now. Yep. Uh, is there anywhere else they'll be able to hear your music? Um, YouTube, YouTube.com, YouTube, .com. YouTube JCA. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's what it is. Star here, like I said, Media Monster Club chats. We bring you nothing but the best. It's always crazy. The conversation was crazy. Uh, I had two intelligent, uh, very talented uh, artists here, entertainers, radio personality. As you can see, they do it all. So it's always love. And once again, I hope you stay tuned and you join us next week for Club Chats.